All right, see, I don't know if you guys know, in, in bass fishing, has there's a lot to do with physics. And uh, bass fishermen are like, I don't know, astrophysicists or geophysicists or something. But we have a fish physicist. Dean Roas is going to show us how to skip a frog, which I mentioned physics because in physics that is literally impossible when you cast a frog or when I cast a frog I should say down into water <laughs> trying to skip it it stops like it hit a brick wall and then I get a big bird's nest so Dean claims that his knowledge of physics is superior and that never happens to him so we're gonna we're gonna figure that out right now it happens Jay <laughs> <laughs> even though I uh, a couple times I'll I'll botch a cast up every now and again all right but uh, the, the equipment's important obviously the rod is, is gonna be key because we want something that has a fast tip which is our shock absorber as we're skipping the frog how long is the rod Dean? this one is a seven foot medium heavy action it's my Terex rod that I designed for ducket fishing. It has my name on it. This is what I frog with all the time. I mean, I've got a hundred thousand hours on this rod. So a frog, and I know what it can do. I know, you know, where it excels and skipping is my deal. I love doing it. And uh, we're going to show you how to do it. So awesome. Jay, just kind of get yeah. out of the way. Move I'm, over I'm here. Out. I don't want to hit I'm you out. anything. Cool. So, so basically when you're skipping, you want to keep a low trajectory. That's the whole key. So it's a lot like swimming, a lot like swinging a baseball bat. Okay, nice and low. And uh, more importantly, it's like skipping a rock. You know, you get low, you want to get uh, to where your, your trajectory is going parallel with the water. So as you can see, the round part of that tree right there, we're going to skip the bait uh, underneath there. And the cool thing about what we have here, we have a lot of duckweed. So you're going to actually be able to see where the bait hits each time. Okay. Now there are times where I can make it skip, you know, 10 times. I can, there's times where I can make it skip two times and, get, and still get to where that's at. So, Basically, we're going to do a, a small, uh, just keep your eye out up there in that section up there, and the frog will, will end up showing up there. So you can see, we overshot our, our deal. You can see my frog way in the back back there. You'll see it, it's coming, coming, coming. There it is right there. And you can see we've hit a couple of marks here in the, the duckweed to where it actually hit the duckweed. And the key about that is you have to have some confidence in your casting ability to free spool it, but control it with your thumb, if that makes any sense. I mean, I can feel it. I can feel the line peeling off the spool with my thumb and knowing if a backlash is coming or the velocity of the bait because the rod is telling me that it's, it's slowing down. I need, that means I need to slow down the spool. And that in itself is all about control. It's controlling the speed of the spool. And it's very, very difficult. But when you do it so many times, it becomes easier and easier, but you have to practice it. You have to practice it. All right, well, let me ask you this. Do you crank down the magnets at all? Because you know there's gonna be some resistance once you're skipping it? I do, and you can. Uh, I'm just gonna show you that the rate of speed that the bait drops is is the speed of... That doesn't look cranked out. No, it doesn't. It, I, I, want, I want it to be free because when it skips, there's so much momentum with the frog moving I don't want to take away from that. So when it hits, I'm feathering the spool, but I'm letting it go. And, and there's so many times where I, I'll hit one skip and it's not where I want it to go, but I will free spool it when it, when it impacts and it'll shoot the frog off in different directions and, and I'll get an extra two or three Come on. Feet. Yeah. Are you serious? Yes. It's, so it's, you're like curving the frog yes, on I, the skip? I, I can do all that. I what can curve thing? it. I can move it. I can do anything. Yeah. Come on, dude. Yeah. Seriously? Yeah, like I can wrap it around, you know, a tree if you want. I mean, I can do that. Yeah, I want to see that. Whoa. So let's. We'll try here. We'll try this tree right here. I mean, I don't know. It's usually when I get in a rhythm, you know, I'm I'm pretty good at it. But what I'll do is I'll run it along the tree and I'll I'll, I'll try and put it on the back side uh, of the of the limb that's coming in the water right there. So you ready? Now we're behind the tree. You can't see it. But you'll see it come off the side of it. There he is right there. See him coming out of it? So you curved it around? I brought it around. It's like a golfer would, would do a draw. And you, you, what it is, you, the speed is going, the momentum is going, and once you reach a certain point, you slow the spool down, which causes it to bring come to the left. <laughs> that is nuts, man. Whoa, that is awesome. That's crazy, Dave. And so, other things too you can do with a frog when you get to a you know a certain spot on on the deal here you can I can make it walk 
one side further than the other. So what that does is you do one short skip and then one long one. One short one, one long one. And what it'll cause it to do, it'll go to the left. I can make it walk to the left to where if I want it closer to the cover, I, I just short, I short and then long it, the, the skip. So like right here, I, want, I, I can make it touch. See like right now, I can bring it around. It's hard with all this. There's a lot of stuff in the water right there. But in open water, I can, I can walk it around the actual uh, log itself. Wow. Bring, it, bring it inside there. Have you gotten the message? This is why Dean Rojas catches a lot of fish that we never even see or think about fishing for. And it's a lot like a golfer because you know they, they're on the range every day hitting a thousand balls. And you know, for me, I'm just happy to hit the thing. With them, every every swing they direct the ball where they want it to go. Yeah. Whether it's a you know a draw, you know, or a slice or whatever they want, you know, and they, they make the ball do what they want. No different with me with the frog. I I I tell and I do, you know, I put that frog where I want to. That's crazy dude. Now on the skip. Does it matter how many times it skips? Like no. twice or ten times? I don't care. You don't as, long, care? as long as it gets there, like that's a one skipper, even though it went into the, into the, you just kind of crawl it back in like a live little creature, you bring it on in. And that's the beauty of the bronze eye, it's weedless. It doesn't get hung up. So it doesn't matter if you can throw it, I'll throw in that pocket back there where there's limbs and when you're thinking, there's no way I'm going to throw in there because I'm going to get hung up on it, you know? Throw that sucker in there. Now I'm hanging over a limb. You just take your time. You know, don't get excited. You just you kind of work the frog through there. Gonna hop over a limb. Keep going. Mm -hmm. Nice and easy. He'll come, he'll come back out of there. You know, just on it. We're just gonna pull on it just slightly. So you're you're not gonna out. waste that cast. No, I am not, because that's you get one shot at that. If I go in there blown with a troll motor, the whole spot's wasted. So or now, yeah. it threw the frog right in the middle of the little pocket there, which is kind of good. So we have a little hole right there. That, that's my skip hole right there. That's where the, the bait initially impacted, was right there in that little hole right there. And it went flying. And that's when I talked about when it hits, I free spool it, and then it shoots the frog. That's why the frog went way back in there. If I would have feathered and stopped it, it, it would have killed it right there. All right, so now I'm thinking after you just did that, which is pretty awesome too, do, do you uh, make the bite on the hooks bigger at all like so many people do with frogs? I do, you, you I do. do. But when I'm fishing like really matted stuff like this, you got to be really careful because you don't want the hooks to grab everything. Right. You know, because That's if you do, asking. you're going to have stuff hanging off, off of the bronze eye and you really don't want that. Um, the more open water I fish, the bigger I open them up. I mean, I mean, they're they are way. They're not even facing the bait. I mean, they're up in the sky. Really? Yeah. Because okay. I want them when they come down on it, you know. And what happens when they're when they're pitched up like that? It causes the hooks to pivot on that and puts the hook straight into the top of their mouth. And that's exactly where you want it. Okay. You're okay. not going to lose them. All right. Well, I mean, I, I don't even know what to say here, man. I mean, uh, <laughs> I thought I knew everything you could do with a fishing pole, but not that I could do it. But uh, this is unbelievable, honestly. Like, I don't know if this is coming across, but if you're in the <laughs> boat right now with Dean, uh, you're blown away, and, and I hope you are, man. Wow, yeah. Dean. These are just things that, you know, I've learned over the years. They're just and, things. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I spend a lot of time on the water. You know, you get to uh, experience a lot of different things and different um, reactions of the fish towards the bait and everything and know what works and what doesn't. Dude, that is like the biggest understatement of the century, of the fishing century. <laughs> Seriously, if you were here, and I, you know, I, 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 this is for real. Like, I'm blown away by this, dude. I, I mean, thank you for like Welcome showing there. us. Yeah. I mean, uh, if you ever have the chance to be like a, what do they call them now? Not a co-angler, marshal. Marshal. If you have, if you have a chance to be a marshal in Dean's boat, beg him to show you something about frog fishing. Like, even if it has nothing, even if you drop shot in the whole tournament, like. And he probably will. So that was awesome. The cool thing about the marshals is that's the reason they all want to see me throw the frog. Oh, do they? yeah, they do. That's that's the thing. They say we're gonna see Kermit today, and you know, I'm like, well, maybe for a little bit, you know, and I'll bring him out, and I'll I'll do some stuff here, you know, fish for 10 or 15 minutes, and you know, just kind of mess around, uh, try and catch one or two. But 
they just they just and when they do they sit up at the edge of their seat when that goes on you know I mean it's it's really cool to see that and uh, if it makes me feel good to show them yeah. you know because if, if I was in their shoes that's where I, I would want to see it you know and heck it doesn't take long to pull out old my frog and and uh, give them a whirl every now and again what's cool is when I'm on a bite like it all day long like this year was uh, the Arkansas River was that's all I did wow. and it was so much fun you know, my marshals was like, oh my God, because they could hear the explosion, you can't see it, you know, and then I, me, I'm, you know, yanking them over the, the pads, or the, I mean, sorry, the grass and grass and everything. It was just an ex exciting way to catch them. So much fun. All right, man. Well, that's another mind-blowing Kermit the Frog tip. <laughs> I mean, it's not even a tip. I don't know what it is. It's beyond a tip, but uh, yeah, I hope you guys dug it.